Good morning. Today is a highlight chapel, and we're going to feature the immersion spring break trips. Um, I know that there are some groups of people out there. We kind of watched you come in all huddled together, excited to hear some great stories. I am a big believer that God uses experiences in our life. Um, he's developing stories in each of us, and they fit into his big story. Um, I've invited some students that have went to different places. We had about 250 people go out, 16 different locations, and each of these students represent a different location. They have a different story, a different perspective, and I just want to take you in a little bit and let them tell their story. So Ishmael, we met last year. Um, it was your freshman year. You came to the activities fair. You're interested in doing a short-term mission trip. We term them immersion trips, and I kind of told you a little bit about the focus, where we went, and when I said Brazil, your eyes lit up. Um, you thought about that, and this summer you emailed me and said, I'm really interested in going to Brazil. How can I pursue this? You got on your fundraising, made my heart happy. Um, but as we kind of chatted, there was some ambivalence um, approaching the trip. So tell them about it and one of the highlights. Um, well, before the trip, I didn't feel spiritually prepared. Um, and so actually, I was really apprehensive mm -hmm. about going. Actually, right before the trip, the day <laughs> before the trip, I didn't want to go at all. Um, I was making a lot of excuses in my head as to why I felt like I shouldn't be there. Before the trip, I, I was kind of concerned about the content of my heart and if I could show the villagers in Brazil God's love. I knew I didn't have it in me, I just didn't have the compassion. But soon I found out it had nothing to do about me or anyone on the trip. When we visited the first vi one of the first villages, actually one of our last ones, our first encounter was with Maria. Um, she had shared with us that, uh, actually the moment we walked in, she had burst into tears. She shared with us that her, her, husband's, her husband's eye was injured by a nail at work for which she needed surgery in Manas. And unfortunately, if she didn't get the funds for the surgery, she would have to stay in the hospital of, from, uh, from, his, from her family until, until work, until he does. But there, because of that, there was a huge burden on her to take care of her two kids. Um, but immediately, God's love hit her and I like a storm. We didn't evangelize to her. We just listened and prayed. And that was God's love to her. We weren't actually supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be in a different village mm -hmm. that day, or at that moment. Um, but it was rained out. And it just goes to show God's orchestration in hand mm -hmm. that allowed us to be exactly where we were to show, him, show Maria his love. Mm -hmm. And I saw his love in many other places as well in Brazil. It was in the smile of the many young children that we saw. It was also... Sorry. Oh, sorry, they changed us, and mm -hmm. many of us mm -hmm. came in almost scared that we couldn't connect with some of the children mm -hmm. due to language barriers. But that surprised us too. They attacked us with love, mm -hmm. God's love, wide brown eyes that searched and saw good in all of us. Mm -hmm. So neat things yeah. that you experienced. And one thing that is neat that I would love um, the students to know about you is you have an interest in medical. I um, mean, that's where the connection was. This was a medical boat that went down in Amazon, and not only did you experience something in Brazil, but here you volunteer at the Holland Free Clinic. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing we can go out, and many of you have had camp experiences or short-term mission experiences, and that's a one-time experience. But we want that to continue in our life, is we want to live for God on a daily basis. And that's what you're doing here. It's not just the one week, but you're living out in your life. And I really admire that about you. Um, the other thing that's cool about a mission or the immersion trip is we bring our community back to us. Um, you as a HOPE student, you really bond. And one of the trips that we do is local, and so that community is here. And Kayla led that trip, and I would love for you to just um, tell us a little bit about that. Hi, uh, as Nancy said, I'm Kayla, and I led the Holland Immersion trip this year. Um, in planning our trip, my co-leader, Luke Wiles, uh, and I wanted to be really intentional about being people-focused, um, because we realized when you go into a a broken community, mm -hmm. there's not a lot that you can fix. And so in this, we wanted to be very relational um, with everything that we did. So we had three smaller goals that kind of embodied this people focus. 
First, we wanted to educate ourselves and the students on our trip of the communities within our own community, the ones who are often overlooked and underserved. We really wanted to understand and begin to push aside the stereotypes that we have of the lesser of these people. Our second goal was to get plugged in. We wanted to get plugged in locally to, mission, to ministries, mm -hmm. excuse me, and to churches. Um, and so we worked with many different cultures and different groups of people mm -hmm. in order to tap into the passions of every student on our trip. Um, and with that, we really wanted to stir within them a desire to continue uh, being involved locally. Our third goal was to serve in a Christ-led manner um, and to build relationships that could last longer than just the one week of our trip. And, and when you're serving in your own community, that gives you an opportunity to make those relationships mm -hmm. long-term. Um, and so some of the communities that we worked with are the homeless population, individuals who have a low income, and people who have special needs. Um, and so in serving with the homeless population, we worked closely alongside the Holland Rescue Mission. And we worked with the director, whose name was Todd, very closely with him. And as we were driving out to one of the tent cities on Tuesday morning, of which we have six tent cities in Holland, by the way, um, that many people don't know about. But as we were driving out to them, we passed a man on his bike. And, and Todd pointed him out to us and knew him by name and said that he was very well acquainted with this gentleman. Uh, because he had been in and out of the mission three to four times. And so we had asked Todd, uh, my co-leader actually asked him, hey, how often do you face deception in your job? How often are you lied to? And Todd said, every day. And Luke said, wow, that would be really hard, I think, to have to personally mm -hmm. know you're being lied to. You're being looked in the eye and you're being lied to. And Todd said, well, the Bible talks about how God grants us new mercies mm -hmm. each and every day. Mm -hmm. And it's with those new mercies that we are given that we also need to share with the people around us. And it was through this concept that Todd kind of went about his job and his daily interactions. Um, and so this concept of new mercies came up for us multiple times throughout the trip in working with individuals who often push by the wayside. I mean, so that was really cool for Todd to share that with us. Mm, that's really great. And then what I love about your trip, <clears throat> because it's local, is you continue to build a relationship with people. And both um, Luke was your co-leader. You and Luke um, volunteer or work at um, Benjamin's Hope. Shout and out. we have some visitors here. <laughs> and so you're well-loved. Um, and there's many Hope alum that work with um, Benjamin's Hope. Pretty special place. Um, and they even have llamas, I heard. Is that true? Alpacas. Okay, pretty cool. Um, so that is something we want to continue to encourage um, is you that went on immersion trips or if you didn't get that opportunity, that you're living your life, finding places you can plug in. So the last person I want to introduce you to is Priscilla. And... Priscilla, shout out for Priscilla. And you went to Jamaica, I know that, because we shared that trip. Um, I would love for you just to give a highlight from that trip. Okay, so for me, one of my favorite parts about being in Jamaica and just being away on an immersion trip was the quiet time that we had carved out each day. Um, we'd start our mornings at the work site alone with God, just a chance to dive into his word and just be quiet. It's so noisy here and there's just so much going on that um, one morning in my quiet time I wrote this and it took coming back to all the noise for me to reread it and go, wow, that is what I learned on this trip. So I'm going to share that with you. God, I want to be thirsty. Every day I want to be thirsty. I want to start my morning off at the well. You are the well that will not trickle will not run dry. I have tasted from the other wells. They have contaminated me. I've invited those wells into my veins. That water traveled to my heart. I didn't tell anyone where I went to fill up my buckets, but you, God, you found me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? There's no place I can find that you don't know about. The water. It did not last. 
I grew dependent on water that dried up before I was done with it. But you, God, you turned it off. You led me to a different place, a place of forgiveness, a field of freedom, a sky of shimmering lights. You walked me back to the well that I left. For now I know it is here that I am satisfied. It is only here that my earthly desires are crushed and my eternal treasure is found. Mm, thank you so much. And thank you, just the three of you again. Just you're living it here. Um, we're highlighting the trips. And I do think when we um, go to a different place and we have a different pace and we can get a different perspective, and you highlighted that, especially just getting removed, getting some time with God, but um, that can happen here. Um, one of the gals that shared that went on the California trip, in fact, I heard it twice this week, they um, equated it to CASA. And so there are things right here I want to encourage all of you to get involved in. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And go live for Jesus and live right here in hope and Holland for Jesus. You're formally dismissed, and there's going to be some pictures, but you may go. Thank you.